When it comes to 3D printer bed probes, the options are plentiful. But what if the best probe isn't a probe at all? Probes serve two primary functions, gantry leveling and bed mesh generation. To accomplish these tasks, we can use either contact or non-contact measurement. The probe measurements will be used to ensure that a constant distance is maintained between the nozzle and the print surface. This distance, called the Z-offset, will determine the extent to which the first layer extrusion is squished. Too high, and we won't have good adhesion. Too low, and the nozzle may scratch the plate. In order to determine the Z-offset, we must know the distance between the nozzle and the trigger position of the probe. We can determine this value by first probing the bed, then jogging the nozzle towards the bed until we get to Z0. If the nozzle is still too high or low, as determined by the paper drag test, we can adjust the Z-coordinate to compensate, using a technique called baby stepping. We would then subtract the baby stepping value from the current probe offset in firmware to get our new Z offset. This is the clipper way. The process looks a little different in RepRap or Marlin firmware. But overall, pretty easy, right? Sure, as long as you don't plan on changing the build surface or the nozzle. Every time you do, you'll need to recalculate the Z offset. You may not mind, but in some 3D printing workflows, that can be quite a nuisance. This is where nozzle probes come in. Nozzle probes measure the bed surface using the tip of the nozzle, eliminating the need to recalculate the Z offset in the case of a nozzle swap or build surface change. Different nozzle probing solutions exist with different implementations. Some printers have strain gauges built into the printhead to detect the contact between nozzle and bed, while others have them built into the bed. The one we'll be focusing on today is a retrofit solution called TAP that can add nozzle probing to your existing printer. TAP combines a short section of linear rail with an optical sensor. In its resting position, the optical sensor has its beam interrupted by the presence of a protrusion on the rear of the TAP assembly. When the nozzle contacts the bed, the front part of TAP moves up, restoring the beam and switching the state of the optical sensor. In this way, TAP is able to measure the height of the bed at a point using the nozzle itself. TAP is designed specifically for the Voron Stealth Burner a novel print head design most often found on Voron printers or Voron derivatives, but also compatible with other machines. TAP comes in a few different flavors, plastic or metal, and styles, build it yourself or pre-assembled. The plastic kit version requires that you print your own parts and source the hardware separately. The plastic pre-assembled version is identical to the kit version, but with the assembly done for you. The CNC version is pre-assembled and made from machined aluminum, there are two primary offerings in this category, that from Mellow and that from Chaotic Labs. With so many options to choose from, which is the right choice? Let's find out. And you'll want to stay tuned to the end, because the answer might surprise you. All of the tab variants I test in this video will be installed on my Formbot, aka Vividino, Trudon 2.0, a Voron derivative. This came from factory with an afterburner printhead, but I've since upgraded it to the stealth burner using the pre-assembled version from Formbot. The plastic kit version of TAP goes together fairly easily, taking approximately 30 minutes for the initial assembly and another 30 minutes to install it on the printer. The second contender in the plastic category is this pre-assembled TAP, also from Formbot. I paid less for this than I did to print the parts, purchase the hardware kit, and assemble it myself, so this is hands down the better value. The Formbot TAP uses glass-filled ABS for the printed parts, a house brand MGN9 rail and carriage and the OptoTab V2 PCB, which can be powered with either 5 or 24 volts. Mellow CNC tap is made from machined aluminum, has an MGN9 LDO linear rail, and uses a similar but slightly different PCB for the optical sensor. Chaotic Lab CNC tap uses an MGN7 rail, which is of smaller size and has been reported to cause stability issues. On the other hand, the narrower rail gives access to the rear screws meaning that this can be installed without disassembly, unlike Mellow Tap, which you'll soon see. Rather than the standard optical sensor, this version of Tap uses a limit switch. Unfortunately, this switch is only rated for 5 volts, making it incompatible with the Trudon, which runs on 24 volts. For these reasons, I'll be ruling out the Chaotic Lab CNC Tap from this comparison. The installation of Tap will require that you first remove the front faceplate of the self burner, followed by the tool cartridge and the extruder. Before proceeding, I'll install these belt grabber blocks to maintain tension on the belts and make this process a little bit easier. We'll then remove the X carriage. Formbot tap comes fully assembled with all of the necessary fasteners already in place. 
Mellow Tap is mostly pre-assembled, with some loose hardware and electronics that we'll need to add ourselves. Before proceeding, we'll attach the Tap PCB using the provided screws and standoffs. This product was just recently released, and unfortunately at the time of filming, no assembly instructions were provided. The following is therefore my best interpretation of how this should go together. The first step will be to install the X end stop bracket. If you're using sensorless homing or have a gantry attached end stop, this won't be required. A small ball bearing is first inserted into a machined pocket. The bracket is then attached with a short socket head screw. Before installing the end stop, which was removed from the original X carriage of the stealth burner, I'll temporarily remove the JST connector housing in order to thread the wires through the bracket. Formbot Tap has this bracket designed into the part. We'll simply fold the wire over on itself, then screw the end stop into the plastic. No need to remove the connector. In order to install a pre-assembled tap, we'll first have to do some disassembly. This does, in some way, defeat the purpose of pre-assembled, but it saves us from installing heat set inserts. We'll need to remove the tap front first. In the case of Formbot Tap, we'll then need to remove the bottom screw and heat set standoff from the rail. We'll next remove the rail carriage by sliding it onto the provided plastic dummy rail. The belt ends must be threaded through the tap rear, then secured in place with the provided belt clamps. In the case of Mellow Tap, the provided flathead screws were too short for the belt clamps. After struggling with them for a while, I replaced them with slightly longer button head screws. We'll then secure the tap rear to the X rail with four button head screws in the case of Formbot Tap, or four socket head screws in the case of Mellow Tap. We can then transfer the tap rail carriage back onto the rail and replace the bottom screw in Formbot Tap. The bottom screw on Mellow Tap didn't need to be removed because it is flush with the rail. This provides no safeguard against gravity, so be careful the carriage doesn't slide off. We can then reinstall the tap front. In the case of Mellow Tap, we'll need to add four button head screws to complete the assembly two at the bottom for the tool cartridge to sit on, and two at the top to hold it in place. The top two screws should be left loose. Formbot Tap has a convenient zip tie slot to manage the X end stop wires. Mellow Tap unfortunately does not. We can then reverse the initial disassembly to reinstall the extruder, tool head, and front faceplate. Make sure the bottom of the tool cartridge sits on top of the button head screws at the bottom of the tap front piece. Formbot Tap comes with a pre crimped wire harness, but it has a JST PH connector on one end for the OptoTap PCB and a JST-XH on the other end for the extruder breaker board on the Trudon. Mellow Tap comes with a wire bundle that has JST-PH connectors pre-crimped on both ends. If you're plugging into a breaker board with this type of connector, you can simply add the plastic housing on both ends and plug it in. In the case of the Trudon, we'll need to cut off one end of the wires and crimp on the provided JST-XH ones instead. Be mindful of the wire ordering on the breaker board side. The reference shown on screen is correct for the Trudon. We'll plug the cable in on both ends, close the door, and that's the assembly complete. Double check your belt tension and adjust as appropriate. As compared to Mellow Tap, the range of motion on Formbot Tap seems to be considerably less. So much so, in fact, that the state of the optical sensor wasn't changing. This is when I noticed that the belt clamps were limiting the travel. I took the entire thing apart again and trimmed the belt clamps which seemed to solve the issue. I'm not sure if this is a design flaw in TAP or simply an issue with FormBot's assembly. TAP allows the print head to move upwards when the nozzle contacts the bed, but we don't want it to move during printing. To limit the movement, magnets are used to keep the front and rear portions together. When building the DIY version of TAP, you have the option to use two sets of magnets or one set of magnets and a set of screws. More magnets means more stability, but also more force required to trigger the sensor. If the force required is too strong, the nozzle may mark the build surface. It's therefore advised to use the 2 magnet configuration with smooth PEI and the 4 magnet configuration with textured PEI. Both Formbot Tap and Mellow Tap have 4 magnets. In the case of the former, two set screws on either side of the carriage are used to adjust the magnet position. With properly toleranced parts, the magnets will pull together as soon as the screws are loosened, as illustrated here on DIY Tap. On the Formbot tap I received, the magnet holders were too tight in their slots, so they didn't pull in on their own. I had to push from behind in order to get the magnet blocks to move. On Mellow Tap, the position of the front magnet can be adjusted in a slot. 
This is a clever way to adjust the strength of the attraction without changing the number of magnets, and is a feature unique to this version of TAP. A notable drawback to using TAP is a significant reduction in the rigidity of the printhead. Some of this rigidity may be able to be recovered by using metal parts instead of plastic, which is the primary perceived benefit of CNC TAP over DIY TAP. But let's see if that's true in practice. I immediately noticed that the metal tap had a lot of play. This led me to do another complete disassembly, at which point I discovered that the screws holding the linear rail in place were loose. I had assumed that these would be torqued down for factory, so I didn't touch them, but that appears to not have been the case. With everything back together, the result was significantly more rigid. The clipper firmware setup for tap can be summarized in a few steps, which I'll show on screen now and link in the description. If you're installing this on a Trudon that is running RepRap firmware, you can simply upload the TAP branch of the Team Gloomy configuration files. One further change I had to make to my Clipper configuration was to modify the start print macro by adding the indicated line. This ensures the extruder is heated to printing temperatures after probing is complete. This is required because TAP probing is done at a lower temperature to prevent oozing of the nozzle affecting the accuracy of the results. Before we're ready to print, we'll need to set the Z offset one last time. From here on out, the offset won't be affected by changes to the nozzle or build surface. The first attempt at homing revealed that the X end stop wasn't being triggered, causing the printhead to crash. The tap carriage is slightly narrower, so I designed this end stop extension piece to resolve that Trudon specific issue. Now on to the comparative analysis. Mellow tap weighs in at 77 grams, while FormBot TAP weighs in at 101. In order to quantify the relative performance of these two alternatives, we have two metrics we can use, probe accuracy and maximum acceleration. We'll first break in the probe by probing continuously until the values stabilize. According to the TAP documentation, a good target for standard deviation in the probe measurements is 0.0008. With the clicky probe I had installed previously on this machine, I was able to achieve a standard deviation of 0.000573. FormBot tap gave me a standard deviation of 0.000584. The best standard deviation I was able to achieve with MelloTap was 0.00256, an order of magnitude less accurate. I have seen it quoted elsewhere that a range of 0.005 is excellent and enough for our 3D printer needs. Don't chase unicorns. So I won't hold it against the mellow tap that it wasn't as consistent in its measurements as printed tap. And it's possible that with more break-in cycles, it could achieve the same level of accuracy. The next metric we'll evaluate is the effective tap on the maximum printing acceleration. With a significant reduction in rigidity, the max acceleration will surely take a hit. But by how much? In theory, metal should outperform plastic in this category. But let's see if that prediction holds up. I chose to perform these tests on my Clipper Trudon, rather than my RepRap Trudon, because Clipper firmware has a better implementation of input shaping with results that are easier to interpret. I'll attach the accelerometer board to the printhead and initiate a frequency sweep with each of MelloTap and FormBotTap. Before I show you the results, let's establish the baseline. Prior to installing TAP, this was my X input shaper graph. The recommended shaping function is MZV, with a maximum acceleration of 13,000. The Y axis with the ZV shaper has a maximum recommended acceleration of 8,400. These are the graphs with FormBot tap. The X axis is relatively unaffected. The Y axis, on the other hand, has a significant component of vibration in the Z axis. The maximum Y axis acceleration is reduced from 8,400 to 6,200. Overall, this is a reasonable result. Now, let's look at the graphs from MelloTap. At face value, the Mello result may look better than the FormBot result. However, upon closer inspection, we can see that the scale of the graph is an order of magnitude more. The magnitude of the Z-axis vibration component is 2 times 10 to the 3 for FormBot tap and 3 times 10 to the 3 for MelloTap. The recommended shaping function is the same, MZV but the maximum y-axis acceleration for MelloTap is only 3,800. This is a nearly 40% reduction versus FormBot tap and a 55% reduction from no tap. So how can we explain this? I thought metal was more rigid than plastic. Well, it could be a bad rail. In order to test this theory, I switched in the rail from FormBot tap, but this showed negligible difference. 
I then came up with this theory. Hornbot tap includes two reinforcing screws that span the length of the rear portion. Those screws are steel, which is three times stiffer than aluminum. Therefore, steel reinforced plastic is superior to unreinforced aluminum of similar thickness. So don't be fooled by the shiny package. If I had to choose between these two options, Formbot's version of DIY tap is the clear choice. It's cheaper, more accurate, and more rigid. It also has better documentation and a few small advantages over Mellow's version. I do, however, prefer Mellow's method for modulating magnetism. Perhaps we'll see something like this incorporated into the next revision of TAP. The probing itself works as expected, and gives a nearly perfect first layer. Although, I wouldn't say it's any better than the one I got with the Clicky probe. Given that Clicky can also be used to automatically calculate the Z offset without any reduction in the maximum printing acceleration, frankly, I'd sooner choose it over TAP. TAP also has the following drawbacks. It requires the nozzles to be clean, or else the probing accuracy will be affected. It reduces the y-axis travel by approximately 3 millimeters, and it has the potential to damage smooth PI sheets. To its credit, TAP eliminates the need to recalculate the Z-offset when changing the nozzle or build surface. It can also prevent damage to your printhead in the case of a crash, due to the extra degree of freedom in Z-axis motion. So now you have all the information. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you appreciated the effort I put into this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. A special thanks to my patrons for supporting the production of this video. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.